new addition to the family, Mr. John Chuck. Please welcome, well, Father Tomas himself, Alfonso. Showrunner for the show this season, Mr. Sean Crack. And the creator of the Edmonton the Television Show, Mr. Jeremy Slater. All right, so I have to ask you guys right away. You guys were here last year. Is it scarier in season two? Ben? Just serious. Yeah? Um, I think what's great about this season is that it's, it's exploded open into um, rural America, whereas the, the previous season it was very contained within the city. So it kind of like gives a lot of scope for nature horror, and I think it's going to be really good fun. Now we've seen we've seen the poster that came out, the Comic Con exclusive poster, which I, you guys were down doing an autograph session just earlier. People got that. I hope some of you guys got that. It seems to imply you guys are going to the Pacific Northwest. Jeremy, Sean. That does seem to be the implication, yes. <laughs> Do we want to be a bit more specific about where we're going and why we're going there? Yeah, we've got a we've got an island on the coast of what? Oh. <laughs> John decides to drop the mic now. It's <laughs> the demon. Some notes for you, James. Yes. <laughs> I'm out. Um, we uh, we are going to a, a, a tiny secluded forested island off the coast of. Seattle, um, where you know, we're, we're going to see a foster home, um, a kind of a, a group home for troubled kids, and and um, John is the patriarch of the family. He is the foster dad. Uh, Brianna is is one of the kids in his care, and evil has set his, their sights on this family. So you're going to get some great creepy kids in danger. You're going to get some weird shit is happening in the woods. Um, it's a lot of stuff we didn't get to do in Jeremy, the first. Is it, isn't weird shit happening in the woods like the basis of like 90% of horror movies? It's the <laughs> basis of my childhood. Yeah. All right, well, we won't go too far on that. But John, how, how, has it been for you? how has it been for you joining this show and this cast? Um, well, we haven't started working together yet. I met uh, the three gentlemen, uh, well, uh, the three gentlemen and the lady today. Um, so, uh, my first impression is the mojo is very good, um, and I'm excited about joining the cast. I, I admired them from afar, uh, from their work. I thought the relationships were really clear and interesting, and um, I think that's, uh, you know, in genre, that's a, it's, a, it's a little bit harder of a challenge sometimes just to go beyond archetypal relationships, and so I was just really impressed with their acting, and uh, I just want to fit in. I don't want to fuck things up. <laughs> Why do I think it's not going to be that simple in season two? Brianna, <laughs> like John, you of course also are a Comic Con vet when you were here for Deadpool years ago. Which of course a round of applause, I think. Yeah. Kind of amazing. Some people say that movie was that's because of Ryan Reynolds, but I know better. <laughs> but Brianna, I wanted to say for you, what attracted you to the idea of joining The Exorcist for season two? And, and without giving anything away, where do you see your character going in this season? Um, um, so I had, this last summer I had worked on like a horror comedy movie and it's called Tragedy Girls and it was really fun for me. Um, I really enjoyed like the prosthetics and all the blood and it was just a good time for me. Um, so I, when I, when they reached out to me, I was obviously super excited. Um, also, I grew up loving horror films, so you know this was something that I've loved, and I and I watched all of the Exorcist movies, so um, I felt very prepared. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to answer that question about my character. Honestly. Well, it sounds like you're into horror. I am. Yeah. So that actually, that's a question, Alfonso and, and Ben, you know, Brianna mentioned the Exorcist movies, and of course, from the very beginning, that's something that looms over the show, and of course, the way you guys played it was very smart, Jeremy, and the way you, you pulled it all together, and we have to all give a round of applause for the great Gina Davis, of course, and her first <laughs> I want to get a sense from the two of you, 
because the relationship between Marcus and Tomas, no disrespect, Kurt, but especially as we now go into a road movie of a, of a sort, is very much the core of the show. So what was it like for you guys, you know, with the book and, of course, the first movie in there in the background? Was that something that weighed on you or was it something you actually felt kind of free from? Um, I think at the beginning, uh, when we started shooting uh, season one, there was a very strong uh, skepticism of what the show was going to be about. And fortunately, the fans were very, uh, they shared lots of opinions in social media, everywhere, and they were, and all of those opinions were very positive. So, in a certain way, that gave us a hint of that, that the relationship was going in the right direction. And uh, fortunately, now that we're entering into this new path, this new season, as Ben said uh, not so long ago, uh, we have a little bit more freedom right now to explore new universes, to explore new geographical places, and um, we're very happy and I'm so excited to be here at Comic Con for the second time. I think um, rather than it, uh, it could have been a hindrance, but um, uh, the the book, certainly the book and the movie, the um, relationships especially between the priests are so complex and those men in both those works are very um, complex and very flawed um, human beings and the, the, the thing that's great about um, the book and the movie is that, that they have a foot in a very real world. It, it's a world that is recognizable and very, very solid and I think that's what Jeremy um, did brilliantly in the first season was to keep it in that same real world. So the, the scenes were always Rather than playing horror, you're playing a very dramatic uh, uh, context. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, J Jeremy, as, as you as you weaved in the movie to the first season, no no spoiler. You guys all you know what I'm talking about, right? You know. Okay, that's one. That's not. You don't know. Well, luckily the internet will tell you in two seconds if you don't know. But Jeremy, I, why did you decide to take that approach to weave in the, the, the first movie into the first season? And are we going to see elements of the movies coming into season two? I don't think you're going to see a lot of that coming into season two. Um, we, we kind of had our one twist up our sleeves in the first year. Um, it actually wasn't part of the original pitch. It, it, I sold the show and then like came up with the Reagan twist like two years later, pacing around in, in a hotel room in Chicago, and I, I kind of called up the showrunner, Roland Jones, and I'm like, this is crazy, right? And he's like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. We probably can't do this. I'm like, yeah, we probably can't. And, and we just went back and forth, and, and it kept feeling like the right creative decision. So we kind of snuck it past everyone. I, I think only four people even knew about the twist for the first half of season one. Um, and, and, and part of that was to preserve the secrecy, but part of it was also to kind of give us an escape clause just in case we changed our mind and said, this is insane. Um, and, and at some point we decided we have to just go for it. It's very, it's very scary, but, um, but we, we, we wanted to build onto the existing legacy and we wanted to prove that we belong in this world, that we weren't just kind of taking the name and making a cash grab, that we were trying to actually tell a new story and, and kind of add something to the mythology. And it felt very much like that. Sean, one of the things about the first season of, of, of The Exorcist I found was it not only had a feel and a look and relationships very unlike what you see on network television, more like what you see. I mean, I remember people saying to me when I reviewed it, they said, you know, this seems like a show that should be on cable, not on network. And it's like, yeah, but that's the great thing. Vox is putting it on network, so let's give them thumbs up and see if it works. But also was the great production value, the look of this looked like it was a movie and it was on every Friday night. Going into season two, how do you preserve that and also preserve it now that you're changing the landscape? Because Chicago was so much a character, literally and figuratively in season one, how do you do that in season two? Absolutely, I mean, that was our, our going into this, and, and the reason that we, as, as Ben said, the reason we switched it to from an urban sort of upper class family to this rural, this island, is to give it that nature look and the, the blues and the greens that will make it feel very cinematic. Um, you know, and, and then it opens the sandbox to be able to play in sort of other horror types. I mean, we'll obviously have that atmospheric psychological horror, but now we also have sort of the nature-based horror. A lot of the Japanese horror, like Ringu and Dark Waters, can sort of influence where we're going with it this season to give it that big cinematic feel. 
So that was that was coming into it. That was one of one of the main things we definitely wanted to keep while taking it and say this is now season two. Now, if the, if if Marcus and, and Tomas are going to the Pacific Northwest, Kurt. Are you back in the Vatican fighting the forces of evil within? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I might add you were rather good at last season. So, I mean, Sean, yeah, so Sean and Kurt, this is, I guess, a question to both of you, which is, so are we going to see a little duality happening here? Are we going to see events back in Rome as well as events, in, I guess, in outside Seattle? And how, how is that going to work? Yeah, I guess to start with, um, Ben is back in the Vatican and trying to deal with the way of um, knowing you're working in an institution that's rotten in the core and you know who do you trust and how do you not take something down like that but how do you fix that? How do you hey, I work in Hollywood man, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> What's great about going back to the Vatican is that in reality you, they have the office of the exorcist which has been in existence for a thousand years. Uh, and so we get to play in the reality of that and put Father Bennett in that world to open up the mythology of our show, sort of the greater mythology of our show, to see how that affects the Catholic Church, how that affects the Vatican, and how that affects the world. And will allow us in episode three to introduce Zuleika Robinson as a character that's going to be with, with Father Bennett. The latest new addition to the cast. Yeah, so she's, she's, a, and she's a fantastic actress that will, will take us forward. Yes. This is an applause encouraging panel, my friends. Trust us. Jeremy, to, to Sean's point though, did you get any feedback from the Vatican or the clergy? I mean, you know. I mean, was there some, was there some guy like, oh, I had a friend back in the cemetery a lot like Father Marcus. You know. Oh my god. Yeah. We didn't get any feedback after it aired. We, we definitely reached out to the church before it aired, though. We, we sat down and spoke um, off the record with a couple actual exorcists. Um, which was a terrifying experience because, because you know, they were very humble, soft-spoken, quiet men, and and they would sit here and, and, and in very matter-of-fact clinical terms, they would describe the most terrifying stuff you can ever imagine. And you sit there and you're like, either these guys are the greatest actors I've ever met, um, or or they genuinely believe the things they're saying and, and they're they're telling the truth about their experiences. Um, so, so we, we definitely try, we strove for realism um, and, and to try to get as close as we could to the, to the truth. Um, and we've also just been trying, it, it's been one of our mission statements from the beginning, is that not to present faith in a negative light. I, I think in our show, faith is a positive force for good. You can't have, you can't have darkness without a light source. Um, so we always, you know, there are elements within the Catholic Church in our show um, that have been compromised, that have been taken over by the evil. Um, and that's going to be a big problem for our, our guys going forward, but we, we're always... Em emphasis on the word big, I would assume. Yes, yes, uh, it's, it, but, but we want to demonize the characters, not, not the religion. We, we want to always be respectful to, to faith itself. John, why do you think? I, I, I mean, uh -oh. I, 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 why do you think? Hey, by the way, the cards, the the, the staff here at Comic Con put together for us are very nice. We should thank them. For that. <laughs> John, why do you think this story, The Exorcist, why do you think this endures decade after decade? Um, I can only guess that you know, uh, you know, I've pet theory that you know there were so many. Uh, the brain is a mysterious organ and. So many things happened uh, to people that uh, were unable to be explained, and we had to make up stories um, as to why people behaved in in unusual ways. Um, one of the most um, one of the stories from the Bible that stayed with me, um, uh, the most affecting stories from the Bible, is the story of Legion and how he had to. Uh, how he had to uh, uh, have his demons exercised into a bunch of pigs. And, um, and that story stayed with me as a boy, and I wondered, um, in retrospect, what, 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 what was this man uh, suffering from? Um, we, there was just so many mysteries that, that happened to us, and uh, we, have to, uh, we, we, we have to be able to explain these things. Uh, maybe, perhaps that's why, that's my best guess. Is that good? It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Pretty good. Ben, for you, the, the, the character of Marcus has become, was so powerful for a lot of people because he was so many contradictions and the way you played him was fantastic, which I think also is very good. How do you 
prepare for a role like that emotion? I mean, there's because besides the effects, besides the, the notion of the demons, besides that, The Exorcist season one was a very, very emotional season between the two of you together individually, your own demons, the Rance family, and what they were going through. I mean, you can you can say that it's a metaphor for child abuse or, or, or assault, or whatever. But as an actor, how do you prepare and find that within yourself? Um, for me, it's um, it's all about creating a really active, vibrant backstory. So that, so which I, I try and like work with the text that comes. And so right from the outset, when I was first auditioning for it, um, there was the, the things that stuck with me was that he has a gun. He pulls out a gun, and he's okay with that. He has this language of violence. And Jeremy, just before I went in for my first meeting, I had a phone call with him. He said, "We have this idea that." Um, we see an episode where Marcus, as a young boy, goes in and into a room with a possessed person and is told that he can't come out unless he cures the person. And, and so I thought, well, he's either a really holy kid or he's a really angry kid. And then, so I linked the, the violence, and I, so I pro approached him with a story, and I said, okay, what if this kid um, uh, watched his father kill his mother with a gun, which is how it started, and then Jeremy developed it. And they went with it, and then so I just kind of pieced together this backstory. So I do that on every job that I can. Really. So it's it's always kind of like there to kind of play with, just under the surface. And I, I find that I can sort of open channels within myself to do. Al Alfonso, for you, it, it seems that the way that we've been talking about today, season two is a huge departure for Tomas. Who was a fairly grounded guy. I mean, he had his issues, obviously, but a fairly grounded guy with a family and a, and a community and whatever. And now he's possessed these, let's call them talents, for lack of a better expression. And he's he's left Chicago. You know, and he, you guys are on the road. What do you think that is like for that character, and how do you think it will change him as we go into season two? Well, uh, in season one, uh, as, as you already said, uh, he says goodbye to Chicago. He says goodbye to his family, which. We had a very tiny view of, of his sister in Pilot. He also says goodbye to his congregation, to his career that was in, in a very that was going very well, and he joins Marcus. And at the beginning, in, 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 in season one, he was resisting the idea of this task that he that he was chosen, or he was uh, that this divinity. Uh, touch him for for him to to do a greater job, and I think that right now in season two um, he's more open to that. He's more open to the idea of really doing something good, really doing something uh, potent, great, and at the same time this idea is gonna struck him and is gonna generate some kind of chaos because of the risks that he's gonna take. Uh, unnecessary risks from Marcus' perspective, and there's going to be a very interesting um, situation and clash with uh, with Marcus' perspectives, specifically because he is my teacher, and, and uh, you can you can agree or you cannot agree with stuff, but as a team you have to work as a team, and you have to prepare uh, just like a, like a plan, and you have to follow the plan. And there's going to be some, yeah, some friction over there. But I think that this Tomas, I think is, he's going to be more open and more active. You know, I have to say, in many ways, season one was built around the friction between you two, so that might be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially working with Ben, is, uh, being on set with him is, is such a cool thing to do. Uh, <laughs> specifically, to connect with him. Uh, it's it's incredible to connect and, and to work with Ben. Well, and I'm I'm, I'm going to join in there. Likewise, we have a really really great uh, working relationship, and it's just a joy to come to. I mean, Alfonso is working in a different language to start off with, so he comes to work so fully prepared, and he learns every single line. And a lot of actors don't, and so you're just you can just go in and you can just play together, and uh, like a lot of stuff just happened between us on set that wasn't necessarily scripted. So it's a really good working relationship. And something, so, sorry, something that I, I don't know how you Ben... Have to so, no, no, no. <laughs> so, something that I, I don't know how Ben achieves it is 
that we are in this intense, dramatic scene, and suddenly they say cut and say, you know what, I remember this joke. <laughs> and it's like, how do you manage to do that? How do you manage to separate what you were doing so intensely and so in, in, in the scene, and then you're remembering a joke? How, how, how do you manage to do that? But yeah, we have, we have some laughs on set. We want to take some questions from you guys, and so we'll be getting ready for that. There's microphones here for you guys to go up to. But just before we do that, we do a few things. But Jeremy, I just wanted to ask you, you know, part of what we saw in season one, especially the opening with Ben and, and, and the exorcism that, that Marcus was doing then, was outside America. Are we going to see, are we going to see the exorcist leave America? Obviously, we're going to spend some time in Rome, but are we going to see the, the exorcist leave America in season two? Next time. Uh, I don't think so. I, I, I think um, I think you're, for the first half of the season, we are going to see some road trip um, adventures with the boys. But I, I think you know there, there's a limited number of, of places that you can convince of convincingly double Vancouver for. So as much as we would love to <laughs> have like Vancouver's, ev Piana, Vancouver's, Vancouver's everywhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, I, I think we're going to, we also, we know what the audience wants. They, they're going to meet this family, they're going to fall in love with this family, they're going to want this family saved. And so, even though our two stories are going to start on, on, on parallel tracks, I, I think everyone wants to see those stories kind of collide as soon as possible. We, we want to see Marcus and Tomas come to town and kind of help these guys. So I, I think we're going to leave the international stuff for, for Bennett and the new mouse character who you will meet in the first couple of episodes. And, and try to get some international flavor there. Before we go to questions, I think, Jeremy, you had something you wanted to show people. Yeah, I mean, look, we're obviously a network show. There are certain things that we wind up filming that's a little too intense, a little too disturbing to air on broadcast network. Um, so we wanted to bring some of that really disturbing footage there. <laughs> and really, 